Hey guys and welcome to Words at Scale. Uh, this is not going to be a typical AI related video and this is kind of a request from my Discord community about the flipping of the websites, buying domains and the whole works. So I have flipped websites in the past and I mentioned one of my websites that I did sell in one of my previous videos. You can watch it now wait till the end of this presentation and this is not an intended as a full course but rather as a workflow because many people are confused of uh, what it takes to first pick a website then build it up and sell it so this is going to be a schematic that's going to be available to you for free on the words at scale slash tools as a downloadable file so let's start. The whole process, at least how I see it, takes uh, six months. The reason it's six months is that we are buying either expired or aged domains. This is not about starting a fresh website from scratch. So during the first month, you need to select a niche. And this is extremely important. That's why I'm dedicating the whole month for that. There are several ways you can go about it. You can reverse engineer profitable niches uh, using Flipper or Motion Invest. So the way to do it is to basically look at the listings, see which websites are selling for which multiple, and then many of them, or most of them rather, give you the URL inside of the listings. You just have to register within those marketplaces and you can check that those domains out look which keywords they're ranking for and their backlinking profile, their traffic figures, the amount of content they have. You can download their sitemap even to get all of the pages. And yeah, this is one of the best resources to reverse engineer this uh, the niche. Then you have your AI tools. Uh, one of these is the Niche Finder. And this tool parses internet for profitable niches and they have they do not disclose the exact url but you get the niches that are using adsense ezoic and other ad serving platforms and you can see the amounts they're earning and estimate your future earnings and basically the potential of the niche using that tool alone and you can just use ahrefs or semrush and look at the websites that you're following say you're in a dog niche or a pet niche, you can look at different pet breeds, you can look at different sub niches and see, for example, Ahrefs estimates the traffic worth. So it's one of the ways you can judge the profitability of a niche, for example. So this should take you around a month or so. And sometimes everything just clicks and you pick your niche straight away. Sometimes it takes longer. But still, you shouldn't rush and you shouldn't underestimate the importance of that stage. Then you need to pick your domain, obviously. And this is where you are offered a choice. You can buy an expired domain, meaning that this domain is kind of dead for Google. It's canceled. If you go to the website, you get an error. And the pros of that is that those domains are dirt cheap, sometimes as cheap as eight or 10 bucks. So for an investment of $1,000, you can get 100 websites uh, if you so wish and just say run a portfolio of potentially profitable websites. The cons are quite serious as well. So those sites that are cancelled are uh, of lower quality generally. They also possess a higher risk because sometimes they have been overtaken by spammers in the past and misused. So you need to check whether they are spam free and potential free. And the rankings may never fully recover. So if you buy a website which got cancelled six months ago, you may lose all of your rankings. And there is very little you can do about it. Then you have your age domains and with the age domains, the pros are quite self-explanatory. They are basically of high quality. They have solid rankings, yet the main con is that they are more expensive. So to buy the expired domain, you can go to Spamzilla, which is an amazing tool, which allows you to 
look at the domain at different angles. You can link it to Ahrefs, for example, but by default it gives you the MOS domain rating, rating, it gives you the spam score, it gives you links to the Wayback machine, so you can check how the website looked like. Or you can go for GoDaddy, and it's been my experience that the GoDaddy's auctions domains are of higher quality, they are more expensive, but they are of higher quality, and obviously there is an overlap. So some of the domains that are listed on GoDaddy auction will be in SpamZilla as well. So again, you want to buy a, an expired domain which hasn't passed the two-month mark since its cancellation. You want to check the spam score. You want to go to the Wayback Machine and check how the website looked like. And this is one of the ways to see if it had been overtaken by spammers in the past. So if this is a website which is positioned to around dogs, for example, and you go to the Wayback Machine and it sells sex toys, then uh, I would stay away from this website unless, unless it still has some amazing niche related um, rankings. And also you can check the past rankings, you can check the backlinking profile, the free option is the Hoff uh, suite of SEO tools, and the paid option is Ahrefs or ACMrush, those are very solid tools, industry standards. Then for the age domain, you can go uh, and use a broker like ODYS or SERP names. Uh, and they do their due diligence, for example. So you're kind of in a risk of free situation here. But you still need to check the rankings and the backlinking profile um, manually. And I would still check for the manual penalties if there were any. Next, what I do. I run a technical audit and you can go crazy with the technical audit, but I only check for the three things. So I check the core vitals, meaning the speed of the website and it, whether it's mobile friendly. The second step, which is kind of the continuation of the first one, is often to change the theme. And on many of my websites, I use the popcorn theme, which is extremely fast and it's it looks nice and doesn't have access codes, uh, for example, so it doesn't slow the website down. And I would check for the 404 errors and broken links. Again, um, tools like Ahrefs have a free webmaster tools suite, so you can uh, connect your domain and check those free of charge. So then the month three arrives and we have a zero step, which is uh, fairly similar for whether it's an expired or aged domain. If it's an expired domain uh, with both domains or websites, you need to follow the 80-20 rule. So you need to decide which 20% of the content generates 80% of the traffic. And for the expired domain, which is uh, this one here, I will I sometimes use or I used in the past the Wayback Machine to parse the past content. It is kind of morally a gray area because you are not owning the content, you haven't written or ordered it, but sometimes it's safe to assume that if a person let go of the domain, they don't care about the content as well. But still, if you need a quick fix and you are running out of money, you can use the Wayback Machine to parse the past content. I wouldn't do it, quite honestly. I would just rewrite it. And some of the AI tools are dirt cheap, especially when it comes to mass production. So one of the reasons to, to use AI is uh, to check the content. And if it's thin, so if it, it only has a few words under its belt, if it doesn't answer the question clearly and directly, so it doesn't have these, uh, that answer target ready, and if the content is outdated, so we have a list of something which is the best X in 2020, we obviously need to update it to the current year. For the age domain, again, we won't be using the Wayback Machine, obviously, but the 80 to 20 rule applies. And again, if the content is thin, doesn't answer the question directly or is outdated, so you need to rewrite it. And I personally use Jasper, but you can use other tools like Katap or Wordplay or Autoblogging. It's up to you. I have many reviews on my channel regarding those tools. So step one is to build topical authority. And many people argue that topical authority will be the decisive factor when it comes to when it comes to rankings. 
So Google wants to see that your website is not a fluke and it's been an authority on a certain topic. So for that to happen, you need to first create a list of keywords so you can use tools like answer the public. Uh, you can parse the people also ask correlated queries using the SEO Minion plugin. So you end up with a huge list of say a thousand words. Then you need to cluster the, key the keywords. You can do it by yourself manually, which is a tedious process. Uh, you can even search for some free keyword clustering and grouping tools online. You can use keyword qubit. You can use tools like Surfer SEO, which does some keyword grouping and clustering, and it's up to you. So you need to end up with a cluster. And one of the reasons is that you need to have different silos, different subtopics and niches. And you also need to decide at this stage whether uh, some words constitute a single article or they constitute different articles. And the best way to do it is to just enter the query on Google and see if uh, different domains answer the same query. So if you enter two semantically related queries and the same domain show up and so the same URLs, then it's safe to say that uh, you don't need to write separate ar articles. But if separate articles show up, then yeah, you need to <laughs> create them separately, very easy. Then once you have this, uh, the list of the keywords, uh, which is grouped and clustered in categories, you need to apply, you, you can combine two strategies. And again, it's a separate video and my channel is not about SEO generally, but uh, you need to decide which tier or natural tier your domain or website is associated with and you can read about the avalanche strategy that uh, helps you decide on your tier so basically it is decided upon the traffic that you get and um, your monthly traffic is synonymous with with a certain tier and then you can use the kgr or the golden rule approach to decide on the keywords so say you bought a domain which is like under 10 domain authority or domain rating so it's a very an authoritative website then you only go for the keywords which are 250 monthly searches or less and you need to calculate the KGR or uh, keyword golden ratio which is the number of websites that come up uh, when you search for own title when you run the own title commands in Google and you divide that by the monthly search and if your number is below 0 0.25, then it's safe to say that you are going to rank for these keywords. I'm actually putting up a KGR calculator on my Words Scale Tools website. It's not there yet, but if you check in a week or so, it should be. And yeah, so you create your keyword list first, then you cluster those keywords into categories. You apply the KGR to create the first priority keywords and then you move up with your traffic so the more traffic that you get the more higher volume keywords you can focus on so for example if your traffic is 100 a month you only target the monthly volume of 100 and once your website attracts 1000 visitors per month you can now focus on those keywords with a higher search volume then what you need to do is create an MVP of a blog post. I am not a huge advocate of or optimizing content at the beginning or spending hours and hours on end on a single piece of content. So I would rather Google tell me what has more potential. So I would just uh, write my content as fast as possible, but I would also, I would always keep these three things in mind. So I want the outline to be as detailed as possible. And you can check out my outlining um, YouTube videos where I basically give you my whole process. Then I make sure that every piece of article, piece of content has a very clear instant target. And this is basically my first H2. So for example, if my article is on can dogs eat bananas, my first H2 would be a paraphrasing of that. So is it true that dogs can eat bananas? And I would try to answer the question directly under 150 uh, words, usually. Well, then what I do, I would add FAQs to every piece of content. And this serves two purposes. First, it gives you more opportunities to rank. 
And then basically, uh, if you see that some of the keywords that you have in FAQ start showing up in Google Search Console, you might consider creating a separate article around those. And the logic is very simple. If like a short FAQ answer ranked, then if the keyword has enough volume, you can allow you can afford yourself to write a full on article. So your idea here is to write as many articles as possible. I would target at least one article per day, or better two or three. Then I would analyze and go to my Google Search Console regularly, which is the step two, which I call the double down. And basically you see which keywords and URLs stick. And once you see that the impressions for a certain URL starts coming in, you can, uh, but you are not with on the first page, you can uh, update the content. And again, uh, you can over optimize and optimize everything. But I usually do only two things. I make, make sure my title is click worthy. And you can use ChatGPT for that, for example, or other tools like Jasper. And I also improve the SEO score using the Neuron Writer or Surfer SEO. I don't do it at this stage because it would have slowed me down. And even if the content is 100% optimized, there is no guarantee Google will rank it. So I don't over optimize my content at this stage, but I do here. So again, if I see that I'm starting to show up against a certain query, I audit my title and then I run the SEO score audits. Step three is start monetizing. And it's very important that between here and the final stage, I want you to at least add a minimum of 100 new articles. So 100 pieces of new content. At step three, you can consider starting to monetize. You can add Ezoic or AdSense. You can insert affiliate links. You can start collecting emails via the lead magnet. And at the final step, you can consider selling your website at a multiple, provided it's it has increased in traffic. So if your website is under 5K, I would use Flippa to sell it. If it's under 25, I would use Motion Invest. And if it's over 100,000 page views, I would go for Empire Flippers. And this is it. Again, it's not a full tutorial. I just wanted to show you the workflow, the process, and the amount of time it takes to go, for, for example, from a hundred dollar domain to three, four, five, even ten thousand dollars in the end. You can get this workflow at worst the scale slash tools. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Press a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.